Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the usage of Google Classroom for delivering your lectures in online mode. Today I will be discussing the topic of classwork and assignments. In my previous tutorial I have focused on setting up your basic Google class with the stream. I want to draw your attention to these four tabs at the top of this page. The first tab is Stream, which I have covered in an earlier tutorial. The tab which we are going to focus on today is Classwork. I am going to go through these tabs one at a time and I am going to do it slowly. So if you feel that you know some of these concepts, please skip the video to the next one. The first tab we have over here is Classwork and Classwork permits you to add assignments and deliver them to your class. Students can respond to these assignments. The next tab we have over here is People, which permits the addition of teachers as well as students. For example, if you are a teacher and you need to add your co-lecturers or tutors, you can add them using their email ID. Please note that as we are on a Google Enterprise account, you can only add emails of those students or teachers who are registered at our institution. You can also add students by clicking on this icon and inviting students via their UMS student email. Alternatively, the students can enroll using the invite code. The last tab you see over here is Grades. Grades will become active only when you set up your classwork. The cumulative grades are displayed over here. Okay, let's go back to classwork and let's set up an assignment. Now, in order to make this video more user-friendly, I have created an assignment prior to this recording and I'm going to create one to assist you along the way. Let's look at what an assignment looks like. Now this is an assignment and this is an assignment which has been created over here and I have rubrics as well as the current level of completion. Okay. Now if you click over here on this assignment window you will see three basic functions. You can delete it, you can copy it or you can edit it. Let's click on edit. Okay, this is the assignment which I created. The title is assignment 1. I want to create or modify it, so I name it assignment 2 for your reference. And the next thing which you need to do is add very clear instructions. Now remember when you are delivering any content online, the student needs to be informed very clearly about what they are expected to do what is the deadline and what are the rubrics. This will in improve learner engagement. Now this is assignment 2. So this assignment has been designed and developed. Has been designed and developed 2. You can state this over here for the reference of your students. You can also state your learning outcomes or LOs based on your table 4. Please state the deadline of your assignment clearly, the date for submission as well as the penalty if any for late submission and then your rubrics. Now in addition to this kind of instruction you can also add an assignment. For example if you are from the field of graphic design you may wish to add a file or an object for identification or this can also be done in the case of engineering where you may need to have the students to analyze a specific object or image file. Some lecturers may choose to use YouTube. For instance, uh, we may have examples where lecturers ask their students to view a YouTube video and answer the questions upon completion of the YouTube video. You can add multiple files to this 
assignment window. Okay, let's move on to this side. So, in this section on the right, you can assign your students, either all the students or a specific group. So, assignments can be allocated based on groups. The points for this assignment, in this case, is 100 default. The due date you can set, but please take note that if you set a due date, the student who submits the assignment after the due date will basically get a rejection. We move on to the next one, which is the topic. You can assign this particular exercise to one of the topics in your stream. Okay, now coming down to the rubric. The rubric can be created here. I'm going to click on a pre-made rubric because it's going to be difficult for me to create a rubric during the course of recording of this video as it takes time. Now, this is the rubric which I have created and I've used a criteria for references. So, I'm going to give the students one point if 25% of the references which are cited are pertinent or relevant to the topic and I'm going to give them four points if all of the references cited are pertinent or relevant to the topic which has been discussed. Now, you can set up these rubrics and once you set them up, you can basically copy them. So, if you want to edit the rubric, I can click on edit and I edit this rubric. Now, this is a very simple rubric which I have created only for references. If you need to add a criterion, for instance, you need to add a criterion for usage of language, you can add it here and you can save this rubric after you add. You can modify the points. So, the points I have set are default 1, 2, 3 and 4 in increasing order and you have the levels and these are the criteria. So, this is relatively easy to work with as the rubrics are easy to manage. Okay, now I'm done here. So, I click on save and I save my rubric. So, since I have not made any changes, I won't get a save click here. I can just go back and close my rubric. Now, my rubrics have been set up and everything has been done. All I do is click on save. Now, when I click on save, this particular assignment will be saved and it will be visible to the class. So, you can basically deploy this assignment to the class via your stream. Now, if you see the stream, the stream has been changed. It says that I have posted a new assignment and this will be visible to the student. All the student has to do is to click on this and they will reach this particular assignment. Now, what you can see is the lecturer's view. I cannot enable the student's view as I'm logged in as a lecturer. And this is basically the assignment. So, once the students uh, start uploading the assignments, you will see the number of turned in assignments and the number of students who have been uploading the assignment and you can sort it by status, by first name, by last name and all other criteria. Okay, and your instructions are here. So, now we go back to our stream and that's basically what I wanted to cover in this short tutorial. I will conduct another tutorial on rubrics because that requires some time and thank you very much for watching. Happy e-learning and stay bio safe. Thank you.